With Barnstable Today, I'm Sarah Colvin. I'm out here in a cranberry bog in Marsons Mills today with former Highline Captain John Lynch. John, good morning. Good morning. Thank you so much for joining us today. So obviously uh, you've recently retired uh, from service as a Highline Captain. Uh, tell me a little bit about the, your history um, working with boats and on the water. Uh, I started in 1961 professionally as a uh, in the Navy for four years and then 12 years, uh, or nine years after that in reserves, active reserves. And I worked for um, Ted Gelinas, who was over on Pleasant Street for a year and a half, and then he went out of business because of the Steamship Authority um, licensing thing and went to work for Nantucket Boat, which Scudder bought out in 1971, the Scudder family. And I've been with the Scudder family since 1971, December. Wow. So how many different boats have you captained over the years off for Highline? Oh, God. Um, 10, 15. I, don't, I can't remember them all. <laughs> Whichever one they had, I ran. And you had estimated uh, something like 17,000 trips back and forth between uh, Nantucket and Hyannis. Is that right? That was just on the high speed from 1995 on. That was 17,640. Oh <laughs> Did it ever get boring uh, going back and forth between no. Hyannis? It never got boring. No. No. What was the most exciting part for you about uh, working for the, for the Highline Ferries? Just the people you meet. Um, when we started the high speed, we started carrying the, the workers, the construction people, all the builders, plumbers, and we call them the worker bees. And uh, you get to know them on a first name basis and meet their families and watch them move on, some retire. And uh, I really miss those, those people, those times. We don't get much time because once we get underway, I'm up in the pilot house. But all loading and offloading, uh, we get to talk to them, and occasionally I run down and grab a coffee and stop and talk with some of them. Exactly. So I, I miss those guys and girls. So tell me a little bit about uh, what it was like transitioning uh, into the high-speed ferry. What was it like when you first got that boat? <laughs> we had no training to speak of. <laughs> um, it was all computerized. It was all done with joysticks. There are no rudders on the, the high on our high speeds, and um, the builder of the boat, the Duclos family, they came and rode with us for a week, and um, there was more trial and error, and you found the best thing. So, some, some things work for some captains, and what I did maybe didn't work for somebody else. So I mean, it was just kind of taking bits and pieces from the different fellows, guys that ran the boat, and um, putting them all together. And each boat has been different. The Grey Lady one was a little sports car, but it was a rough rider. It didn't have ride control, and Nantucket Sound during the winter was awful. That's how I started keeping track, just out of curiosity, to see how many bad days in a row we could have. And then we got Grey Lady two with the ride control system, and she was great. And now with Grey Lady three, we just call them Grey Lady. Um, it's just a great boat. It does everything you ask it to do and more. Hasn't let us down. Hasn't let me down. Didn't ever let me down. So. <laughs> and, uh, of course, gets the passengers back and forth uh, very yep. quickly. So you mentioned um, the wintertime, uh, treacherous, of course, out there. Uh, yeah. are there any, were there any days that, that you were, were concerned that you were like, wow, it is really, really dangerous out here? If it gets to the point where it's really dangerous, we tie it up. And we've, I've shut it down over on Nantucket on a couple of occasions and had to spend the night because it was just too rough to come back. It's not too rough for the boat or us. It'd be an awful ride, but uh, with passengers on board, you just can't do it. It's not. It's, they, they, anytime it's rough, people have to get up and walk around. If they'd just stay in their seats, it wouldn't be a problem. But, so, uh, any particular memories? Anything that sticks out uh, over over your long career as captain? The, just everything. It just you know, it's um, there are some good trips. There are more good trips than bad, but the bad ones, usually in the ice. That's when it got really tough because you had to try to avoid the ice flows we're doing 30 knots and uh, the boat is built for the ice it's got ice protection on the bottom but you didn't want to hit a chunk of ice doing 30 it would make a god-awful noise <laughs> <laughs> i'm sure i'm sure so what led to your decision to uh, retire well i'm going i'm not actually retired i'm semi-retired i'm going to work during the summer um i just turned 68 yesterday day before yesterday happy birthday thank you and uh, it was just time to slow down. While I've still got my health and my wife is healthy, um, we want to be able to do things that we've always talked about. So uh, when I talked to Murray, the operations manager, and asked him if it would be possible to go seasonal, he said, yeah, we can work something out. So 
that was my decision to at that point. And there are a bunch of young guys that want to come up, and they've been waiting for me to slip on a banana peel for years. So. <laughs> <laughs> they want to get a, yeah, behind they, that high speed. They want their chance. Sure. Yeah, and the kid that took my place, the guy that took my place, has um, been with us for a long time, and um, I'm sure he's going to do a great job. Now, you mentioned um, you're going to semi-retired, of course, and going yep. to take some time to do things that you and your wife have always wanted to do. And I think one of those uh, is kind of interesting, and you talked about uh, heading down south. Can you tell me a little bit yep. about your plans there? I've made, uh, over the course of the years, 27 trips up and down the coast from Florida to Maine to Florida. And uh, we always talked about doing it. And my wife came on one of my deliveries. I worked for um, Alan um, Oyster Hub Marine Manager, Peter Marriott. And uh, he got me these deliveries in the, in the spring and fall, mostly the fall. And she came on one of them and said, boy, this is really fun. And uh, we started talking about it. We went to boat shows, looked at different types of yachts, and settled on a, what they call a trolley yacht. And uh, five years ago, we bought our boat, the Carol Ann, and uh, we're going to go down for the winter, or at least till the money lasts. And <laughs> we, hopefully, we'll make it down and back. About so, how long does it take to get down to Florida if, uh, by boat from here? On our boat, we plan on doing it. Um, we're going to leave right up. The, I'm, bringing, I'm bringing the boat to Norfolk, Virginia, sometime later on this month, and we're going to leave it there until just after Thanksgiving. Uh, have Thanksgiving up here with my grandkids and daughter and her husband, and then uh, I have another daughter who lives in Orlando. So I've got four weeks to get to Titusville, and then uh, day after Christmas we're going to get back on the boat, and our zip code is going to be zero 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 zero. We're just going to go and <laughs> stop where. Um, Wherever, we want to. wherever yeah. you decide to. Yeah, we that's like the fantastic. keys. That's going to be our destination, we hope. So. Excellent. Yeah. So, John, we're, we're standing out here at a cranberry bog, which, uh, and you're, you're wearing waders and, and a lovely flannel shirt, and I think uh, many of our viewers are saying, okay, you know, we're, we're out here in the cranberry bog, we're talking about boats. What the heck are you doing out here? I'm working on the water. <laughs> <laughs> it's uh, a different kind of working on the right. water, though. Tell me, like, you, you mentioned uh, before we started the interview, you've been doing this uh, cranberry harvesting for 15 years. How did you get into uh, to this? Uh, our good friend owns the bogs, and um, I did it on weekends and my days off. It's, it goes from the middle of September through middle to end of October, and our, our, do, our picking does. And... Uh, so I did it on weekends and my, uh, when my schedule worked part-time. And then after October 1st, I'm here full-time until we get through picking. And hopefully that'll be um, sometime this weekend. Great. And, uh, so what's the crop just, like this year? Pretty good. It's um, not great, but um, it's better than last year. Let's put it that way. Well, they look delicious. And I know we're, yeah, we're getting I'll into I'll grab the season, a handful and you can chew on them. Excellent. So, uh, John, what, what words of advice do you have for incoming captains uh, in Highline or, or in, in, in that line of work? Oh, God, that's a, that's a curveball. I wasn't ready for that. Um, <laughs> you know, just be aware of your surroundings. Just um, know the, your limitations and the boat limitations. And uh, it's not like flying a plane. If, plane. if something happens and you're not comfortable, stop. Look around and see what's going on. Because um, when you're in the fog, it's... You can't see what's around you. You can look on the radar and you can, we have, um, the boat has collision avoidance, so you can plot everything that's coming towards you or away from you. And uh, if someone starts to get a little bit too close or a little uncomfortable, you should call them on the radio and if they don't answer, either try to go around them or stop. And just uh, be careful. Great. Well, John, thank you so much. I'll let you get back to your, your cranberry harvesting today. But I thank you so much for joining us, and it's been a pleasure to speak with you. Well, thank you very much. Thank Come you. Come on, go for a ride on the boat. Absolutely. <laughs> I'm here with uh, Captain John Lynch, of course, uh, recently retired from Highline, but as we see, not entirely retired, semi-retired, uh, here harvesting cranberries and getting ready to uh, set sail for Florida later this winter. With Barnstable Today, I'm Sarah Colvin.